Boy, I tell you, launching a website can be super stressful. So this is part two of how to properly launch a website with SEO. So let's continue our conversation around launching a new website. So in the first part of my video, we talked about all the things you have to do before you hit the switch and it goes live. Now that it's gone live, you're not done yet. We still got some things to take care of. So let's take a look at my after launch checklist here and see what else we need to get knitted up. The first one is, there's a Google site checker for mobile responsiveness. Just type in Google mobile test and you'll be able to test your new website. Make sure it's really being given full credit for its mobily responsive quality. Then we're gonna submit your site to local directories. Now, if you have a localized business, a dentist, uh, a mechanic shop, anybody that has a walk-in presence, we use a tool called Yext, Y-E-X-T, and it is a paid service, but it will get your listing into every possible local index that has service-based businesses on it. So submit to Yext and get all that stuff taken care of so that you can be findable through all of those different directories. The next one is make sure your descriptions and photos are up to date. So a lot of times when you launch a new website, you'll name all the photos, image1.jpg, image2.jpg, and that's you're like, okay, fine, fine, we'll do that for the launch. But then you have to go back and rename those photos where you want them to be findable in Google. So as opposed to image1.jpg, you're gonna name it, you're gonna rename it to like SEO classes, one.jpg, SEO classes two.jpg, or whatever keyword you want that image to come up in Google Images search. Very important. Google Images is the number two way people use Google. It's a very powerful visual search engine. So don't drop the ball at the last minute because you've launched your site. Go back and make sure to rename those photos, the keywords, rather than image one, image two. Make sure the name to name your business with keywords you are trying to rank for as well. So in your Yelp profiles, in your Glassdoor profile, anything that has your name in it, a better, better business bureau listing, you wanna make sure that you bake that keyword into that listing. So like my son works for a BMW shop. I do all the marketing for them because I like to keep him out of my basement. <laughs> anyway, he's doing great. He loves fixing BMWs. And when I rolled into them, they had no clue about how to do any of this. And I actually created a lot of the elements on here based on the work that I did with them. So we discovered after a long interview process with them, that they wanted to become BMW repair experts. That's how they wanted to be found. So I popped into GoDaddy and we found that there's a huge amount of search volume for BMW repair experts. So we bought, go figure, bmwrepairexperts.com for $13. Then we proceeded to put the website together. Now, once their website got launched, I went to, I went to their Yelp listing and added BMW repair expert to the back of their name. And then I went to their, all the other sites that had them listed and I added BMW repair experts. Now they rank right underneath Ralph Schomp, which is the biggest BMW dealership in Colorado. So, and this is a small little garage, but they are killing it. And I just found out that they are going to be opening up a branch location right around the corner from my house and my son will be working there. Boom, drop mic, walk off. I'm so excited. I can drop by and see him anytime I want. And he likes that really strangely. He still likes me. Funny, but it can happen. <laughs> so anyway, it's, it's just a matter of knowing where you're pointing to. So they named their business the garage. But the garage is not helpful because there's a Pilates garage. There's a yoga studio called the garage. This restaurant's called the garage. It, it was a problem name. So I was able to petition Yelp to go in and add BMW repair experts right to the name. And it, started clicking right away. They get business from all over the country because they, they came out of the gate saying they're experts. Okay, so that's where you put your keyword into your Google business listing, your Yelp listing, and any other listing sites, associations you make belong to, any accreditations, go back in there and add that keyword to all of those presences. Then of course, you wanna make sure you go back and do a title tag and description tag audit. The title tag is that blue line that shows up in search results, and the description is what shows up right underneath there. So let me go over to a new Google page, and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm gonna type in um, the Garage Denver. So what we have here, do you see right here where I've added BMW repair experts right to their Google local listing? They now have 65 reviews, and I've only been doing their marketing for, I think a little over two years now. So they're, 
killing it, which is great. But look, there's also a bunch of other things called the garage. All right, now here's the, here is the Yelp profile for the garage. And we want to make sure, and then there's their website, bmwrepairexperts.com. But what happens is when you're building the website, the findability sometimes gets tossed out the door for the design. So make sure you go back in, look at your titles and your description tags, and get those tweaked with the right keywords. Very, very important. Now let's talk about the final phase, phase three, which is all the ongoing elements that we need to keep our, eye, our eyes on. The first one is set up an SEM rush tool or use keywords.io or keywordseverywhere.com. Make sure you have something to keep tracking the performance of your website and how it ranks over time. It takes a little bit of time for Google to recognize the content that you've written and to then actually start ranking you for those keywords. So have a tool in place that's going to really um, give you that data that you need. You want to pull your keyword ranking report every week and watch carefully for improvements. So if you're ranking under a whole set of keywords with your old site, you want to make sure that when you launch your new site, you have a whole, you're watching all those keywords as well as all the new keywords you've planned to rank for. So make sure to run that ranking report at least weekly, if not monthly. Then in SEMrush, they have something called a project. And a project's where you could put everything, the social media, the RSSS, all the branding stuff in one project and you can run it. So kind of an advanced move would be to run a project in SEM Rush. If you have questions about that, feel free to contact me or cook, uh, post a comment uh, down below and I'll make sure to answer those questions. But setting up a project just helps you to keep your ears to the ground of all the things people are saying about your business. And there you go. Now you've done a proper website launch. You've looked at all the indicators for what Google's looking for, how to make your existing content findable, and ultimately, ultimately how to track and record the progress. So good job, you did it. Now start blogging and start socializing. You thought your job was done? Uh-uh, get busy. Hey, don't forget to get part one of how to launch your website. It's in my YouTube channel. And stay tuned because we're gonna continue to create great content that's gonna make you the most findable business online. So subscribe now, hit the bell so I can tell you every time I've got a new one coming up.